plunge in with zone zero until uh, Chrono arrived. Oh, here's something for you, Fable, since you know being a DM. Ah, so tell me. How do you plan on making a nuke this time? Okay, okay, sounds good. <laughs> Avoid combat with him at all costs. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid anything it can seduce at all costs. Have you ever dealt with that? <laughs> Actually, it's funny you say that because my barbarian in the first game literally wanted to do everything in their power to make it so that their character wasn't powerful. They were a halfling barbarian, and as soon as they got a giant axe or a giant sword, they're like, "Can I ha Can it be? Uh, can it be something I can't wield so I can get this advantage?" I'm like, "If that's what's fun for you, then go for it." Buddy. Go for it, buddy. Do. <laughs> <laughs> they did everything in their power not to have any form of advantage, and I'm just like, if that's what you find fun, I'll I'll allow it. Yeah, that re <laughs> that reminds me of my Pathfinder character. He really wasn't meant for combat. He was a bard, uh, Kitsune, who, well, his whole thing is that he could talk well. So As yeah. As for the bard thing, so far, no, I've had two bards. Uh. Rikroy is kind of... He plays a bard ranger, essentially. And he is so far trying to go down the uh, Baldur's Gate path, like Baldur's Gate oh. 3 path, where you can try to talk your enemies out of combat. It's worked so far. It's just that I've kind of had them fight some mindless zealots that even if they were, there's going to be another one that will instantly kill them because, well... Yeah, they're zealots. zealots and they, yeah, they're zealots, and they're not going to let anything go past their grand plan. However, if he was fighting some bandits, I'm pretty sure he can talk them out of it, because <laughs> they're not the smartest. Because I just remember Raikoi rolling. He says, I roll to seduce the cabinets. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> what happened. Or That was like, that's just some stupid jokes that happened, but apparently he got a natural 20, so I had to allow the seduction <laughs> of a cabinet. I had to go with what the, what the rules of the what the rules of the dice gods told me to do. Here's the thing: you can never outdo a bar bard, and how they will try to seduce anything. Oh yeah, the blood hunter. Now tell me, who hurt you? <laughs> I don't know what he means by that with the blood hunter. I once wanted to play that, but I've never gotten the chance. So essentially, blood hunters to those who are not really that versed in D and D world. It's a homebrew. It's a homebrew class created by Matt Mercer, the uh, yeah. the DM of uh, Critical Role. Basically, just think of Witchers, but a bit more on the edgier side for D and D, especially That's... since a lot of those spells and stuff consist of them. Well, one of them is literally you cut your palm to activate blood signals. It honestly, I think he was basing it more off of Bloodborne, but I don't know if Bloodborne came out at that point, but. I honestly really just wanted to try it so that I could make my Bloodborne Hunter in there. Because, well, I love Bloodborne, and you can probably tell that I like the idea of hunters literally made to hunt beasts. Yeah, but, it's actually funny. It's funny because I've, uh, in my world, I've actually added a group of... Um, one of my one of the carrot NPCs I made, he's literally a blood hunter. But he's, he's, a, he's, like, really dumb about it. But I've had the group talk to an organization of blood hunters, but I kind of had it set that where because of how dangerous it is to hunt monsters the way they do, that sadly sometimes a lot of the people die, and it sucks. But it, you're you're literally asking people to hunt monsters in the most dangerous way possible. What do you expect? It was interesting. Yeah, it is. I've wanted to play one just so I can do like the werewolf theme or. Uh, one of the others where, you know, forbidden knowledge and whatnot, because uh, that's mostly what my hunter in Bloodborne was like. He would use a mystical giant sword for funsies. Also, hello, Jorgi. If you want to join, you can also always can. You're always free, Jorgi. Jorgi oh, is no. a very nice man, so go follow him. He's a corgi. Oh, no, not the light, not the moonlit sword. Yes, the moonlit sword, my true mentor my guiding moonlight <laughs> no, get out of oh, i know it's from bloodborne but every time i think of that sword i just think of seeth and then i think god i hate you, you giant <laughs> funny enough uh 
game, uh, not games or sure. Uh, FromSoft always put the Moonlight Blade in their games, just they hide it somewhere. I know, it's literally like the ma unofficial mascot of their games. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just want to use my hunter for the most part. Because... Alright, a healer! Such a great support to the party. <laughs> new plot to make the cleric hate its party. I mean, you don't really have to make a new plot for that. That can just come naturally. <laughs> yeah. Whereas you're just having to spend spell slots to heal them because they're doing the dumbest things. It's like playing a, a healer in an MMO. I've I've never played one in an MMO, but I had a friend who did. He's like, I have the power over life and death. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, gone kind of crazy because dealing with people that constantly yell heal me because they do dumb things is like being the doctor who sees his patient jump down the stairs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You can't say I'm wrong. I know you're not. That's why I said, oh my lord, because you're not wrong. A very versatile class. Good for almost anything. Uh, now tell me, what animals are you going to be transforming into? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to be honest. This is my druid right now in my game. Because every time I introduce a new animal, they're like, can I turn into it? What CR is it? Can I turn into it? I'm like, dude, Stop. And then, I, and then one time, I literally brought up a freaking. Uh, I brought up two aberrations, and they're like, "Can't turn into that." I'm like, "It's a, it's an aberration. Of course, you can't turn into it." And and then and then I showed them a monstrosity, and I'm like, "Can I turn into that?" I'm like, "Look, certain ones I'll allow, but not this one." Because like the rules as written are like, you can't turn into monstrosities unless yeah. unless the DM allows it. I'm like, not this one. This it's is too weird for you. Stop that. <laughs> that just makes me think they want to be Ben 10. I wish they want to be Ben 10. No, they want to be everything. Oh my god. I had them fight a freaking manticore one time, and they're like, can I turn into that? I'm like, it's a manticore. No, you can't turn into that. <laughs> it's freaking so... I was like, why? It's the TR is way higher than what you can turn into. Oh my god, Jorky, you don't need to say anything about the big titty eldritch god. We don't need to know about that. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> let, let, let me tell you a story, because it actually ties into a warlock. So, in my first game, because I was still new to D&D &D and DMing, I wanted to introduce a funny NPC... His name was Gil. He was a mind player who mm -hmm. sold cursed, who bought cursed items and sold maybe not cursed items to people, depending on who's asking. Uh, basically, I had him. He was set to be a cursed warlock because of something that happened. No one ever asked his backstory, so I never told them. But basically, at one point, I introduced this weird lady who I heavily hinted that she was his patron and a aberration at that she only looked like a lady and everyone started calling him her his wife and i was just like they're not married why do you think that this weird lady and him are married and they're like and they're like yeah you're fine with your wife and i'm like why why do you think he's married to the lady that's painfully obviously torturing him emotionally and physically and they're like yeah they're married like, oh my God. because that's how old couples fight I know that's how old couples fight, but she was painfully obviously his patron, his not wanting to have a patron patron, but they're like, they're married. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I will say, back on the druid thing, uh, that's why I kind of like the rule of you have to, it has to be an animal that you have seen, and it has to be an animal, but that sometimes leads to people turning into dinosaurs. <laughs> I don't think... I mean, it would be cool for me to turn to a T-Rex, but I don't think a DM would allow it. I, I, I hate... I hate... <laughs> you I, hate D&D, but you love it. I, yes, uh, there's this one time, uh, talking about dinosaurs and T-Rexes, I was having the party fight into a giant tower, like a tower fortress, and they were fighting these, uh, bone knights, essentially. And then the wizard's just like, I'm going to use Polymorph to turn the rogue into a T-Rex. And I'm like, you're going to do what? <laughs> and like, yes. And then the, and then they 
basically absolutely destroyed that encounter and i'm like i know these dudes were mobs and just like cannon fodder but did you really have to turn the rogue into a t-rex and they said yes and i'm just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that just reminds me of the time i was watching the unexpectables at one point to kill the boss what they did is they threw the cobalt into the air and turned him into a plesiosaur and had him land on the boss I can't. I can't. Oh my gosh. This is weird. It's like, oh, wait, here's the thing. Oh my gosh, Stu. Oh my gosh. Oh god. Tell me, what animals are you going to be transforming into? Oh my gosh. She got a binder. Oh, look out, we got a fighter over here. Hopefully he doesn't do anything too basic. <laughs> wait, you attack him how many times? That's the scary thing about fighters, is how many attacks they can get, especially with second wind. This is the thing about fighters, though. They're, versi they're versatile as hell. It's just no one gives them a chance to be that way. It's because they're the starter class. It's because they're the one for someone learning how to play D&D. &D. That's why they have so many options. I know, but I, I still think with a fight, I still think depending on how you play the game, you can do a lot of stuff with what you have. Yeah, I feel it's like fighter can also be the one where if you want to play something specifically where you are a uh, jack of all trades. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if I ever play a monk, I'm just going to become Dragon Ball Z man or become Samurai man. There is no in between. Oh, oh, talking about monks, I actually made him I actually made an idea for a monk character. He's actually a luchador. I'm literally bringing in Mexican wrestling as a monk, and no one can stop me. I love it. Oh, funny enough, did you know that one point for Christmas, Quetzalcoatl was depicted as Santa? Oh. Yeah, I can just imagine a giant snake creature flying around. It's adorable. Yeah. Quetzalcoatl, I've always liked this iron because I think of him like a dragon. Which... E. So what are you playing? Ah, yeah. Holy warriors. Now tell me, do you plan on being so lawful good that you actually hurt everything around you? Or will you not even act like a paladin at all? <laughs> that that reminds me of a time I was playing with a DM who would just, like, I was playing a very nice paladin who was just really against undead. So his whole thing was, he is the nicest guy around, but for some reason the DM kept, like, chafing him. Because he was very, he was a... He's what he would be like very positive about his religion is the best way I can put it, where he's, you know, happily saying stuff about it, you know, with bolsterous voice and whatnot, and giving people hugs. And the DM would just like put him down all the time, and I had no idea why. Like I'm like he's just a happy, big friendly guy. Leave him alone. <laughs> You know, I'm. Oh, someone made a luchador and they defeated a. They did. They 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 did the backbreaker on a dragon. They did the back. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh, Mac, Mac. I I don't know if I ever told you the story, but Rikro, but back when Rikro was winning his Everon game, there was mm -hmm. this one point where we were where we were fighting a flying demon, and it was being really annoying because well, uh, flying creatures are annoying. Like that. yeah. And it, at one point, because we didn't actually know how to bring it down, because we didn't have any spells for that, I had the brilliant idea of having my um, my druid fly up to it. As soon as I did, I'm like, okay, so what my plan was, was to grapple it. Because I thought maybe if I grapple its wings, I can kind of like bring it down with me. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, I did, so I get behind the, I get behind the demon, I actually win my grapple check, and then Rector is just like, alright, so what do you do now? I'm like, okay, so this is going to sound stupid. I want to essentially power drive it from the sky into the ground. And it worked because uh, I grappled it and it was falling. And I say as we're falling, I essentially do a spin, trying to make it really like, really silly and cartoonish and anime-ish. As soon as we both hit the ground, my <laughs> druid is knocked out. And Riker is just like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you killed a demon. And I was just like, holy shit, I found no the demon from the sky that killed it. Yeah. It was the most beautiful thing ever. The only I thing would it would make it better if you somehow time. land and flex like uh, Lieutenant Armstrong. I wish, but I knocked myself out with the demon, which I thought was even more funny to me. 
That's wonderful. Sure. It was amazing. Undoubtable muscles. It's so stupid, especially because like, especially because like I never acted like a druid a lot of the time. I just kept doing wrestling moves all the time. One time, in that game, we literally had to go to a nightclub. It was the morning, so the club was closed, and we were beating up the security guards for some reason. And I'm just like, can I, can I just do a, fly, a flying elbow drop? And he's just like, go for it. I tried to kill the dude by doing that. It's funny. And here comes the druid from the top trees. Yeah. <laughs> just using the vines as a fucking bouncer to pull yourself back into a clothesline. Listen, if you allow me to do stupid crap, I will do wrestling moves with characters that should not be able to do this stuff. Why do you think I want to do stupid stuff with a warforge named Kaysor that constantly talks about how mad he is and how he's going to kill you? <laughs> talks in the third person. Oh, he just throws it back to the real ones. Oh, oh. thank you! Ranger oh, Rangers. Are a really useful class to have in the party. They can track guide, protect the party, and deal some major damage. With that being said, what's the actual class you're playing? <laughs> sadly so true. Yeah, I it's heard... so underpowered. Yeah, unless they do, like, a lot of bow stuff. But yeah, I heard about the problem with them having, like, a... having a companion for it. And yeah. Yeah. It's, a. Uh... I heard someone explained to me just how bad rangers could be, and there's just people that can do all their stuff but better. Yeah, that's why. That's why, thankfully, uh, thanks to uh, thanks to D and D one, like the new edition that's coming out, essentially, they're kind of upgrading and giving a lot of changes to them that sound like it's actually improving them. I hate this new trend of just naming something, putting a one after it. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. I completely agree with you. A lot of a lot of corporations are doing that, and it's really starting to become unnerving. It's like they're essentially trying to say all the stuff that came before it isn't really a thing. So yeah, it's kind of gross. It's kind of yeah. stupid, like saying it's basically like those guys who wear like those loose fitting like tuxes now, and basically like oh, I'm so much more. I'm calling this the one, and everyone clap. Yeah. Anyway, rogue. Oh, you don't have to tell me twice to quit DMing. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> For the rogue. Uh, um, it depends. Sometimes rogues can be really cool, but then sometimes you can be like, oh, this bad guy shows you an item, and the rogue's just like, I'm gonna steal it, and then, and then they put, and then they put like all their um, expertise into sleight of hand, and then they do it. So let me give you a thing with freaking Radcroy, right? Okay. He was playing a rogue in the first game, and because of expertise and the way he built Pippers, he was just like, so I'm going to use sleight of hand or I'm going to use uh, investigation. Does a 30 work? And I'm just like, you're just doing this on purpose now, <laughs> aren't you? He's just like, yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, we got really high level. We got I got them all the way to level 20, but every time because of expertise and how we built his his character... He'd be like, okay, so I'm going to roll a sleight of hand. And I'm like, you don't even have to. He's like, but I want to. Like, he literally oh my God. sounded bad when I told him that. <laughs> and I'm just like, I know you're not going to get below a 10. Why? He's just like, I just, I just want to see what number I got. Oh, oh my God. I'm not even kidding. That's how he got with me. And I'm like, oh, my God, fine. Because, like, literally, when he was, like, level 10 or 12, he would, roll, he would not roll below a, a freaking 10. At times, one time, his highest... Was like was like twenty eight or something. Oh my and, god! And then, the, and then the party is just like, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna add freaking guidance to that. And then they kept adding a bunch of stuff just to get it higher. And I'm just like, you guys already beat the DC. Why are you doing this? They're like, because we want to see how high the number can go. And I'm like, oh my god. That's There's... the problem with roads. They do that crap, and then they and then There's... they smile at you like this is. <laughs> You see, and I'm just like, I hate you. This is this is what we call bullying, Fable. This is called bullying the DM. No, no, I know they bullied the DM. They know they did. I kept telling them, why you guys bully me? They're like, because we love you. And I'm like, all right, okay. Just bully the DM more, you buttholes. Uh, funny enough, uh, 
Someone made homebrew and put all of the classes from uh, Final Fantasy XIV into D&D, and now, apparently, <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV is making its own TTRPG book with the classes, because I guess they took the advice to do that. Oh well, yeah, it's literally, uh, Gregory is a uh, astrologian in my game. Cool. Or astrologian, or however you want to pronounce it. There's, I don't see anyone, really. I... I honestly think it's kind of cool, but either way, let's moving forward. Sorcerer. So tell me, how lazy do you want to be to be the most powerful? <laughs> oh, world. There, there is a funny story I can say about sorcerers that a friend told me about, where they just used all of their power on a random, like, farmer man to turn him to, into basically a demigod for funsies. <laughs> <laughs> they say, yes, everyone will fear Bob the farmer. I mean, it's kind of true, because from what I knew, I've never fully played a sorcerer or seen many people play them, but but I know for sure that there's something called a coffee lock, which is apparently, I think it's a sorcerer combined with a warlock type build, but you can essentially become very broken with those kind of spells. Dear so, Lord. yeah, the fact that the fact that he said, tell me how, how lazy do you want to be? You can be extremely lazy and the most powerful person in the entire game without trying. And that scares me. Yeah, that would scare me too. Block, I'm actually really excited to see your high level feature. No, you can't have a short rest yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Oh, I don't even remember what that's for. <laughs> and I'm still laughing. Uh, so, the thing about warlocks. Okay, so let me explain warlocks real quick. Warlocks are. They have. They have like the one of the weirdest um, abilities because they have um, they can only ever have up to about two spell slots at, at maximum. But the thing about them is they get it back instantly on a short rest. So as soon as you use your as soon as you use your spells, you're you're out of luck. So you're gonna have to short rest instantly to get it back. <laughs> That's why he said no. You can't have a short rest. And that warlock probably already used up all their spells. They popped every single one just to screw with the DM. <laughs> Yes. Wizard. Oh, perfect. I'm actually excited to see what spells you choose for him. And he's dead. Oh, you have a backup. Wizard. Perfect. <laughs> and his three failed death saves are already filled in. Yeah. Yeah. Wizard. Yeah, wizards have the lowest health pool in the game. <laughs> they they get hit by a mild gust of wind and they die. They have to really get up in levels for them to survive that kind of stuff. Yeah, especially early on in the freaking game. Just horrible. Mm. 